Uh, as you know, today we're announcing the new portfolio for national portfolio organizations and for the major partner museums for the three-year period from 2015-16 to 2017-18. And for the first time today, we're also uh, announcing our total investment approach. As you know, we have two sources of revenue. One is granting aid, the taxpayer. The other is lottery <coughs> revenues. And we're giving you a picture of the total investment plans for the three-year period today. Now, uh, a note of background, uh, the grant in aid available for the MPO portfolio in the year 2010 was 350 million. The grant in aid available for the MPO portfolio in 2015, five years later, is 270 million, 350, 270. Today, where our plans are all about channeling more money where it's needed across the country, but continuing to support London, which we regard as the world's capital of culture. So what we're talking about today is a balancing act, uh, but a balancing act with purpose. The current NPO portfolio, as I think most of you know, has approximately 700 organizations in it. We're very pleased to be able to announce today that we've managed to maintain that pretty well at the same number, 670 in the new portfolio from 2015. I want you to a moment for imagine, imagine for a moment what the portfolio might have looked like that we're announcing today um, had we not had a better than expected settlement from the Chancellor for the Comprehensive Spending Review of 2015-16 last year. And if we didn't have the precedent of putting some lottery money into the MPO portfolio for the purposes of touring and children and young people's organizations. If we didn't have either of those things happening, I think today's portfolio we'd be announcing would not be 670 organizations, it would be approximately 250. And that is a sizable difference. In terms of renewal and investment in new talent, we're very pleased that there are 46 new MPOs joining the portfolio. 30 of them are from outside London. Uh, as you may know, we have 16 currently major partner museums. There'll be five new major partner museums joining the portfolio, bringing the total to 21. And one of the important reasons for that is to get a greater geographical spread for major park museums across England. And as all of you know, geography and geographical spread of our funding has been very much in the news in the last 12 months. So let me just give you an overall picture of the trend of funding between London and outside London. The MPO portfolio in 2007, 49% of the monies went outside London. In 2012, the current uh, MPO round, 51% went outside London. In the new portfolio we're announcing, 53% goes outside London. That's in round numbers. For those of you who like decimal points, the precise decimal points are in your briefing pack. Um, just also to remind you about the overall picture of balance and funding between London and outside London, and I think you know these numbers, but I'll just remind you that overall, about 60% of our grant in aid goes outside London. That's when you include uh, museum funding and the music hubs. And about 70% of our lottery funding currently goes outside London. So as I say, we're laying out a total investment picture today. And it's very much our approach to do all we can to grow capacity of arts and culture outside London, rather than, for instance, refurbishing buildings. So a little bit of information, and Alan will give you more in a minute. Grants for the Arts, which as you know, is our important lottery fund that funds individual artists and small organizations, small arts organizations, there are uh, thousands of them in fact. That's currently 63 million a year. In the new settlement, this will be 70 million a year. Currently 72% of grants for the Arts are made outside London. We're also making a renewed commitment to our Creative People and Places Fund. Now, you know that is the fund for building up arts and culture capacity in areas of low arts take up in cold spots. That's going to be extended at its current levels of funding for another couple of years. Uh, I'd like to point you, for instance, to Hull, which won a Creative People and Places bid uh, about 18 months ago, maybe a couple of years ago, of three million pounds. About a year after that, it made its successful bid to be a city of culture in 2017. These consortia that win uh, Creative People and Places bids, it really does make a difference. There'll be other new ideas to assist uh, 
capacity for arts and culture outside London, which Alan will talk about in a minute. Now, if you're increasing the things I've just talked about and maintaining the things I've just talked about, something has to give. And examples of where we'll be spending less, there will be less money for capital. There'll be less money, for instance, for our catalyst endowment schemes. We have a couple of continuing concerns as we look forward to 2015, this new three-year settlement. One of them is local authority funding. As you know, local authorities currently fund arts and culture uh, with greater sum of money than the Arts Council, and they are under pressure. We regard them as our vital partners, and we're very happy that with many of them, they are now regarding arts and culture as an essential local service and managing to maintain spending. I'm pleased to note that in the new 46 joiners to the MPO portfolio, there's East Lindsay District Council, which is Skegness to you and me, and also there's Tyne and Weir Museums, and in both cases that represents a really strong relationship and partnership with the local authority. The other area of concern, apart from local authority funding going forward, is that we do not yet have a full comprehensive spending review settlement for the three-year period we're talking about. So we know what the government spending plans are for the year 2015-16. The new government elected in May next year will then complete that CSR. We'll continue to make the best possible case we can for arts and cultural spending. A relatively small amount of government money that delivers a very big result. I was encouraged at the creative industries reception that the Prime Minister held last night in London that he made a very clear case for arts and culture being considered in the context of the creative sector, that the health of arts and culture was important to the health of the creative sector, and that it was very much very important as a supplier of talent. That seemed to be well understood and delineated in his speech, which I found encouraging. So, in conclusion, for the first time we're laying out total investment plans across granting aid and lottery. We're operating in tough times, but we've setting out a clear intention to back talent and new ideas across England today. And we do believe that the new settlement will be a major boost to England's culture and creativity. <laughs>